Okay, this is third in a series, Econ 2, June 25th, 2011. Hopefully, well, this one's not as scary as the other because this one's the one where we have the solution to your global debt problem. We've talked before about the problem and we showed you the pyramid of prosperity in the debt hole that's being built within an every nation. But here's the simple plan. When we create an enterprise of Earth and a global reserve bank, the enterprise of Earth, which is a merge of all the global enterprises, effectively buys out all of your banks. And when we own all your banks, well, this is a person. Indeed, imagine this is a mortgage, or this is a world, and it's the mortgage and the world. So now when we own our their banks, and we own our own bank, and we can issue our own new mind. We have a giant new pool. See, this is another next big thing. It's a zero or a one. It's one of us. One world, one world bank together. Now, here's how we do it then. See, imagine this is real estate. And you could look at it at a global basis, so it could be just your house. And typically, actually, this is sort of representing, it's sort of crude, but let's say that's a third in that house. Well, a third, but usually people don't even have a third of their house. They're lucky to have, well, let's say you have a third of your house, 33%. So you started with 80% mortgage and you're down 7, 3, 13 points from now and you've, you've gotten your principal down. And the bank basically owns the 67% in debt. But as we described before, basically, the banks really don't own it because they borrowed it from your Federal Reserves and your other banks. And they're full of debt. And that debt's not represented here, but that debt could be this debt here, this pile of debt. And see, when we create this new thing, this debt gets bought by our entire enterprise. It gets retired out, and it gets retired out with the power of this new money, which is a whole new net lesson in itself. But what we do is we basically, we say, hey, listen, we're going to translate those mortgages into new instruments. Now, it'd be a voluntary thing, but basically... We're going to let the house, we're going to let the bank own two-thirds of the property, passively, underlying. So basically, we're going to pay off your mortgage. There you go. There's your house. You'll pay a modest amount for your third and to maintain your house. And you'll pay the taxes in your house. And, and then what happens is, when you sell your house, well, the bank gets a cut of the action. And, well, you don't have to sell your house. The bank gets nothing. But the bank has the value of that. So as real estate prices rise, the value of the bank rises. But see, as the value of the bank rises with the rising real estate prices and the rising prices we acquire natural resources, as the bank rises in value, it allows two things. One, our currency gets stronger, allowing us literally to print more currency. And we build currency against our own bank, but our bank is our entire world. It's still owned by people, but people get to own just a third. It's, imagine it's like the land is owned by the bank, but basically you're still there. You So now all of a sudden the cost of housing throughout the world comes down, meaning also the value of investing in housing goes up because a person in the economy only needs to invest in this part of the bank because it has this bank of infinite wealth for us will just take the balance on its balance sheet and who knows who cares we just got out of our debt problem we just found a way to reduce our costs now this is only just the beginning of the way you think when you earn a world where your customers or your shareholders, or your own best real and virtual employees, when we are working together, what if we owned our world together? I think that's not doctors, borderline psychotic. That's the perfect question.